Hello, this is a video to help you use your Apple Watch. And it's specifically for people that are blind or partly sighted. And the idea here is to learn how to use the Apple Watch with a technology called VoiceOver that allows you to use the watch even if you are completely blind and cannot read the display. One thing I would say is that I would encourage you to watch this video all the way through before attempting some of the exercises that are in the second part of this video, uh, because it will be easier for you to understand. Now, the voiceover technology from Apple is basically a screen reader. What it does is it reads whatever is on the screen. In addition, it has the ability for you to make gestures to move the cursor over the screen and select different items. And so what we're going to do is learn how these gestures work and how in combination with the screen reading technology, we can actually control our Apple Watch. In addition to the voiceover, the actual watch has a couple of buttons. The first button is actually called the digital crown. Now it's a circular button, you may see it here, and it has the ability to both rotate forward and backwards, but it can also has a button that you can press. That is the digital crown, and that is the button that we will be using. There is a second button below the digital crown, but we won't use that today. In addition, uh, some of you may be familiar with Siri. Now, Siri is a voice agent technology that allows us to talk to our devices, and it is quite powerful. Now, there are multiple ways to invoke Siri. The easiest is to say the trigger word and then just ask her to do something. But the downside of that approach is that any other of your devices close by may also pick up that trigger word. And so instead of using the Hey Siri trigger word, what we're going to do is actually use the digital crown. By pressing and holding the digital crown, we can invoke Siri without having to say the trigger word. And so what I'm going to do is give a demo of how I ask Siri the time by just holding the digital crown. So here I go. I touch the digital crown, I hold it down, I speak the command, I release the digital crown. So let's see it work. What is the time? It's 7.40 p.m. There we are. Simple as that. The next thing we need to learn is, is four gestures. Now gestures are basically interactions that we make with our finger and the screen. And these four gestures allow us to navigate the controls and display. So the first gesture we want to move to is the swipe to the right. This gesture is used to move forward with different selections. The way that this gesture works is by touching the screen, maintaining contact with the screen and moving to the right direction. Let me show you. As you may see, the watch face changed. That was a swipe to the right. The second gesture is a swipe to the left. It is exactly the same, but we now swipe in the opposite direction. So we touch the screen and we swipe to the left like this. It's important to use your fingertip, not your nail. Obviously, when doing swipe right or swipe left, it's good to touch the screen the furthest away from the direction that you are moving to give you the most space. But the actual place where you touch is not important. It's the movement in that direction that matters. So this is swipe right to move forward and swipe left to move backwards in the navigation. The next gesture we're going to talk about is the double tap. So the double tap is used to actually select something. It's an equivalent to clicking on a web page link. 
it means I want to open or go to that particular place. And the way that we do that when the voice over is switched on is by using a double tap. So a double tap is when we touch the screen two times in quick succession. So it's a tap tap and they have to be fairly close. And that is how the Apple Watch registers a selection. So I don't yet have voiceover on, so nothing will happen, but I will just show you the effect of a double tap. So one, two, so two taps. So two taps, that is a double tap. And again, this gesture is used to make a selection. It's open or do whatever is selected. The final thing is the digital crown. If we push into the digital crown, just like we did with Siri, it will open the app display. If we push it again, it will go back. The difference between this and invoking Siri is that we're not holding the button down. We're just pushing and releasing. So it is a way to open a menu or to go back from a menu. So to summarize, four gestures. Swipe to the right to move through a selection of, of content. Swipe to the left to move back through a list of content. And again, this is done by holding our finger in contact with the display and moving it whilst maintaining contact, either forward to the right or backwards to the left. The double tap. Two quick succession taps to make a selection, to say that I want to open. And then finally, pushing the digital crown button to open the app display or to go back to the watch face. I think these will become clearer as we go through some examples. Now, what I want to do is turn voice over on. Now, there are many ways to do this, but the simplest way is to use Siri. And so all I'm going to do is push and hold the digital crown. Again, hold the crown, not release, which will invoke Siri. And then I'm going to say voice over on. That will then cause the Apple Watch to switch voice over on because it is now on, it will read what is on the display. And then I will want to return to the watch face by pushing the digital crown once. So let's do that. Voice over on. So now I'm in the watch face. It successfully turned the voiceover technology on. Now, if I want to switch it off, it's exactly the same. I push and hold the digital crown to invoke Siri. I say the command voiceover off. I release the digital crown and now voiceover is switched off. Let me do that. Voice over off. Voice over off. It reads back to confirm that. And now if I push the digital crown, I'm back on the watch face, but it no longer speaks to me. So for the rest of this examples, I do want voice over on. So I'm going to switch it back on again by using Siri. Voice over on. Push the screen, watch face. I'm now in the watch face. So one of the most basic features of voiceover is that when it is on the watch face, which is the display that comes on when the watch wakes up, is the time. And so if we touch the screen when we're in the watch face, it will read the time to us. 
So let's do that. 7.47 p.m. Siri read the current time. So that is as simple. Also, if the watch face is asleep, So right now my watch is asleep. If I touch the screen, PM. it wakes up the watch and because voice over is on, it reads the time. So the next task we want to do is we want to reorganize the app display from a grid of apps to a list of apps. And so we do that by switching to the list of apps and then doing a long press. So let's try that. So I'm going to push the digital crown once. It's now showing me all the different apps and I'm going to press and hold on the screen for a little while. So it brings up the option to switch. And I'm going to swipe to the right to get to list, list view. view. And then I'm going to double tap. List, list view. List, list, list view. List view. One password. So now we are displaying the apps in a list view. And I can move forward and backwards through this list by swiping to the right or to the left. Activity, button, alarms, button, any list, button, app store, button. So the apps are being displayed in alphabetical order. And as I swipe to the right, I move my selection down and it reads to me the name. If I swipe to the left, it moves up. So again, we're using the swipe right to move forward and the swipe left to move backwards in the navigation. Now I'm going to push the digital crown to return to the watch face. Watch face. The final exercise I want you to practice is to use voiceover and the gestures to open the weather app. Now we could ask Siri, which would be easier, but we want to practice using the navigation. And so the way to do this is to, from the watch face, push the digital crown. 7.50 PM. Tap. Tap the screen to bring up the list view and now swipe right until we get to W for weather. Now we, now we can do one at a time as I'm doing right now, but that can be a little bit slow. W is towards the end of the alphabet. And so if I do swipes quite quickly, it will move faster down the list. Now I went too far. I'm now in workout. So if I now want to go backwards, do you remember how we do that? It's a swipe left as opposed to a swipe right. So if I swipe left, Watch chat, button, wallet. Watch chat, weather, button. so Work. right to go forwards button. and down, left to weather. go backwards button. and up. So now the weather button is selected. I know this because it read to me weather. If I now want to open the weather, what I have to do is double tap 
when it is on the weather. So now weather is selected. I'm now going to double tap. And now the weather is open and it reads to me what's on the screen. If I wish, I can swipe right and left to have it read all of the information on the display. But for now, let's just go back to the watch face by pushing the digital crown. Now push it again to go out of the app list to the watch face. So now I think we've shown you all of the things around the basic navigation. My suggestion is that you practice this. Uh, if you have any questions, please put them in the comments on this video. Okay, thanks.